I'm looking here at golangbot.com, which is a great blog uh, area about the Golang language. And in this article, it's discussing contexts, cancellations, timeout, and propagation. So if you're coming from Java language, then by default, we don't really see any of these contexts. This something seems something like a, a, a variable that we pass from one place to another, but it's, is it something, is it part of the language itself? Cancellations, this sounds like a trading and canceling of processes, but so, so the thing that I'm trying to, to say here is that this is interesting if it's a built-in part of the language. So if it's built in part of the, the building block of such a, a commonly used programming language, this uh, which claims to be simple, then this is going to be great because some of these topics are complex and if they are introduced in a simple way in the programming language itself, this is going to be great. Okay, so let's begin. Uh, what is a context? Context is a package in the standard library, great, exactly what I wanted, which is mainly used to propagate cancellation signals from one function to another, or even microservice to another. Let's consider the example of a user sending a GET request to a web server to download 50 images. Zip it and send the zipped response uh, back. The request has been triggered from the browser and let's say that it takes 70 seconds to complete. Okay, so this case that is suggesting we are trying to download something big, in this case 50 images from a server and this request from the web server is going to take 70 seconds to complete. The user is not patient enough I guess it happened to you that you start downloading something and then even either because it's stuck or you just want to stop it, you click the stop button. So the user is not patient enough and decides to cancel it when it is still being processed by the server. Wouldn't it be nice if the server, so we don't want only the client to stop it and the client to disappear, but also the server gets to know that the user, the client, has cancelled the request such that the server can also terminate the request and save valuable CPU and memory. This is the perfect use case for a context. The context allows the server to know when the request has been cancelled. Mm -hmm. I would tr try to believe that the context is assisting in multiple areas and this is just one of them, but let's see. So the context allows the server to know a request has been cancelled by the client so that it can terminate its resources and move on. We will write the program for this as we progress through the tutorial. First, uh, this paragraph is great, it's clear, this uh, blog appears to be promising. A simple example. Let's start by writing a simple example where we have a function which has a long running code that is called for main. So we are going to write a function, long running one, that is being called for main. We must terminate the long running function We must terminate the long running function when cancellation signal is sent from the caller. Let's discuss how we can achieve this with the help of context. So we see here package main, some imports, and something long running. What is the long running function doing? Count zero, count until five, then sleep. Okay, so because we are sleeping, 
Uh, for two seconds in each iteration, this would be a total of 10 seconds, then this long running function would take 10 seconds. And in the main, we call the long running function and print the code. In the above program, long running function runs for a loop of five iterations, which slips for two seconds between each iteration. Although the code is contrived, it is a perfect understanding for understanding context. So please stay with me on this. The above code with print, current value of count zero, current value of count one, current value of count three, current count of, and from each uh, step to the next, I would also print the timestamp because two seconds are passing, count is 10. After 10 seconds, it's complete. So we have long running code, which will complete after 10 seconds. And we want to see the usage of the context object in this context. What if we want to terminate a long running function after five seconds? Okay, so, so in, in Java, the, the, the way usually to do this is to start a new thread and then interrupt the new uh, thread. This is possible, but here uh, we are saying that it's possible with the help of context in Go, which is built into the language which is again great. The main function will send a cancellation signal to the long running. Again, we are having a signal. We need to signal somehow the long running function to stop after five seconds. This raises the question, are we going to see code that checks for the context in each iteration? Or is it going to be something more automatic? I'm curious about it. Function after five seconds using the context. The long running function will receive it and return immediately. Let's see how we can achieve this. Context with cancellation. The first step towards the above goal is to create a new context in the main function. Okay, so we're creating a new context in the main function. We should also be able to cancel this context after five seconds so that the long running will return. Please don't worry if it doesn't make sense now, as we progress with the tutorial, it will be clear. A context with the cancellation signal can be created using the with, the with cancel function. This function needs a context to be passed as a parameter. You might be confused by this since we are trying to create a new context and this function expects a context. This is where the background context has its place. The background is a non-nil empty context. It is usually used as the starting point to create any new context. Okay, so we need to create a, console, a context. We need to create it with the parameter of with cancel. And so they said that we have also a background context that would it's like the basis of the context that would allow us to actually create a console. The with cancel function returns a console and the cancel func. Calling the cancel func will send the cancellation signal. Let's see. So, where are we? Time dot sleep. So, we are defining in the cancel function. Aha. Uh -huh. So, we are in main. We are in main. This is not the loop of the, of the each two seconds do a cancel. So, we call, let, let's see, and then let's see the description. We call context with cancel and we pass it the background context. Okay, so we are asking to create a concept, context. So this will create a context with cancellation abilities. And the with cancel expects a context, but we don't have a context, so we pass it the context dot background. I hope this makes sense. Create a new context. For the new context, we want it with, with cancel. And the with cancel expects the context, so pass it the context dot background, which probably already exists somewhere in Go. And then we have a Go function where we sleep for two seconds and we call the cancel. And then we call the long running. Okay, I see. So we are calling the long running process with context now. And how do we attach this function 
we attach this function of calling the cancel we we simply call we simply call the can okay so this console with console returns two things one the context and also the cancel func and we can call this cancel func and we are going to call it after two seconds and we pass in the context so you both have context cancellation function that we can call and we actually call it and we call the long running context the long running function with context in the above code we do what we just described we create we create a context with the cancellation using the with cancel function by passing it the background context okay so we said it's technicalities we need to pass the background context as parameter we create a new go team which will call the cancel func after two seconds so here we create a new go routine go func call the cancel func after two seconds this sends the cancellation signal the complete main function with these changes is provided below okay function main create a new context with cancel pass it the background context then we get back both the context and the cancellation function create a new go routine sleep for two seconds and call this cancellation function that we got from the context call the long running uh, function with the context and that's it so we just call the the change in the long running function is that we call it with the context note that now that we are done with the main function changes let's go ahead and finish the changes in the long running function the first change needed is the addition of the context parameter yeah we pass it with the context parameter which is passed for main the next change needed in the long running function is it needs to know when the context is cancelled for main function the context so, so it's not just calling the cancel the long running function also needs to know when the context is cancelled when we call the cancel the context has a done channel which is used to notify context cancellation the, so, so the function need to be aware of this somehow let's see exactly how the context done channel which will be closed when the cancel func is called for main this can be used in the long running function and it will know when the context is cancelled the changes described above are incorporated in the long running now let's see the changes in the long running function function long running it receives a context case context nakuda done okay so we do the loop it's yeah i guess we have no choice but at least we have a way of doing this so this function needs to be aware of the cancellation it's not that we call it and we do the cancel and that's it it needs to be aware of it you know what it's good it's good to to explicitly see what's going on if we would cancel this function no one will know when you read the function you will not know that it's possible for this function to be cancelled now we know i'm okay with this so we have the for loop here and now we have a case switch case if context done then return zero context.error okay if it's an error otherwise just continue the loop so we do a switch case inside this long running and for each iteration so it's not going to be cancelled in between the sleep as it as it looks as it looks let's see but it's going to sleep or check if context dot done this means that if what if our long running process i wonder was sleeping here for two hours would it be possible for it to catch the done after one hour i'm not sure by this code but let's see the long running above receives a context parameter in line number five we check whether the done channel is closed if the done channel is closed the select case will be satisfied the reason why done channel was closed can be found out by calling the er method on the context this is done in line number six above and the error is returned in the default case we continue incrementing the count and then sleep for each iteration if the done channel is not closed this default case will be executed i have provided complete uh, program here here is the complete program 
So we have here package uh, main imports, long running process as we saw it, it now receives also the context as an input. In addition to its regular work, it's checking whether the context channel is done. If done, then early exist. We still don't have the answer what happens if we have a process of sleep to hours and we uh, update the channel to read cancel after two minutes. But let's see if this is answered later on. Now we have the main function. We create context with cancel and it receives a context. So we pass it with context of background. We create a go routine function and we ask it to sleep for a for two minutes, eh, for two seconds, right? Eh, then we call the long running uh, tasks and we have it. The above program will print current value of count zero, then long running task exited with error context cancelled. Okay, and we'll terminate after two seconds because we have the goal thing. This is exactly what we wanted. We have sent a termination signal for a long running uh, program after two seconds and have successfully stopped a long running function. Perfect, but wh what about the case where we have two hours and we want to exit after two minutes and the program does not check explicitly as we have seen. In the above program, maybe it will discuss it now. Context with timeout. In the above program, we are creating a new go routine which will call the cancel function after two seconds. There is one more way to achieve the same in context. The with timeout function of the context package creates a context which will be automatically cancelled after the timeout. We can use this in our code and cancel context after two seconds. The modified main function, which uses with the timeout instead of with cancel, is provided below. We see a function. Now we call the context with with timeout. It, it's the same, but we call the context with with timeout instead of with cancel. Right? We call defer cancel func. And then it would be interesting to see the long running process. In line number two of the main function above, we create a context which will timeout after two seconds. Okay, so we didn't explicitly need to um, to say here when to cancel. In line number two of the main function above, we create a context which will be timeout after two seconds. The rest of the program remains the same. The with timeout returns a cancel function which needs to be called to prevent resource link in case of long running completes before two seconds. Hmm. As best practice, we call it every time using the defer. Running this program will print. So what's the difference? Context with timeout. So the with timeout function of the context packet create context which will be automatically cancelled after the timeout. Did we tell it what is the timeout? I don't see where we tell it where is the timeout. Where do we tell it? It's after two seconds. Can we look above? Go function. Here is the main. This is the main. This was the previous main, but we told it to cancel after two seconds. And now in the new main, we don't tell it to cancel automatically after two seconds. So this part is missing. Okay, in any way, we have two ways. One with the with cancel, where we explicitly ask it to cancel after two seconds, and one with the with timeout, where it would automatically cancel. Context propagation. One of the other use cases, but but I think up to now it's, it's clear that we use the context, I mean, the, the global picture is what's important. We use context, we pass context to functions, 
we use goroutines to tell when do we want to terminate and we use the breed cancel or the breed timeout of the context in order to cancel operations. One of the other uses of concepts is to terminate all go routines spawned by a function once the context is cancelled. This is done by passing propagating the context to all child go routines. Let's say we have a web server and it has to contact two DB servers to process an incoming request. It spans two go routines, waits for both of them to return, and then it computes the output based on the result of the two go routines and returns it. If the user decides to cancel the request when it's in the middle of processing, we need to terminate all the go routines spawned by the web server to prevent the go routine leak and also to save valuable CPU time. This can be done with the help of context. Okay, so now they're saying that we are going to use the context in order to cancel go routines. And the example they've provided is a web server that accepts the request, sends two requests uh, to the outside. And if we cancel it, we want to cancel all the subroutines. And as we've seen so far, we need to pass the context to all the go routines. So we have here package main, some struct, then db task one. And again, we see that we have a function called dbTask1. Again, we see that it receives a context. And again, we see that dbTask1 is doing a switch case on the context to check if it's done. And if it's done, then exit. Then we have function dbTask2. Again, we see that it receives a context parameter. And again, we see that it's using a switch case in order to check or a select case uh, to check if the context is done. Then we have a web API, which also receives a context. And it calls a DB task one with the go routine and passes it the context. The main also uh, creates DB task two, passes it with the context and the main should somehow cancel it. Yeah, and we see that function main is creating context with timeout, calling the fair cancel func. And when there is a timeout, then all the sub routines would terminate simply because they do a select on the context. Okay, sounds good. This is beautiful because this code looks good it looks simple um, i cannot stress this enough this is really beautiful the code in go is simple and beautiful if you would look at this uh, in typescript i would see here a mess uh, this is the fact i'm not saying it's not possible to write good clean code in typescript i'm just saying that this is very clean and i haven't seen such typescript Clean code. In the above program, functions dbTask1 and dbTask2 are the two expensive DB operations. dbTask1 returns successful response after 7 seconds and dbTask2 returns successful response after 5 seconds. These two functions accept a context as a parameter. If the context is cancelled, the done channel is closed and these functions return error in line 20 and line 20, 31 respectively. DBTask1 and DBTask2 are called from the web API functions as two go routines in lines 42 and 55. Two. The web API receives a context for main and the same context is passed to DBTask1 and DBTask2 in line number 43. Web API waits for these two functions to return and finally computes the result, which is the sum of the return values of both of the go routines and returns it. In this program uses weight group. I recommend reading about weight groups if you're not sure how weight groups works. If the context is cancelled before dbTask1 and dbTask2 complete processing, both dbTask1 and dbTask2 return error and they terminate. This prevents coroutine leak, also saves valuable CPU time. If context is not used, these two go routines will be dangling and the program will leak resources.
main creates a context with a timeout of two seconds. Hmm. Maybe I was just missing. <laughs> ah. So this is where we tell the read timeout to wait for two seconds. It was hiding. Uh, basically, when we call context.read timeout and we pass it with the background, and the read timeout, as opposed to the read cancel, is receiving another argument, the seconds to timeout for. Okay, okay. The main create a context with a timeout of two seconds, and hence after two seconds, both dbtask1 and dbtask2 return an error and are terminated. The rest of the code is self-explanatory. This program will print the following output, context deadline exceeded, context deadline exceeded for task1 and task2 and exiting. Practical example, web server with context cancellation. Now that we have a solid understanding of context, let's try to use this practically when creating a web server, let's write a program for this right away. So we have here a web server. Uh, it's printing a response. We have here a main, it's handling things. The above program implements a web server listening on port 8080. This web server performs an expensive operation and it's simulated by a timer which fires after 10 seconds. After the web server receives a request, it will respond with the output of 10 seconds, so this program and save this program and run it for your favorite IDE. After this program is run, we will see the output starting web server. Now the web server is ready to serve requests. Let's go ahead and send request using curl, curl localhost 8080. After 10 seconds, we have the request to send the server lock with print writing response. And we get the following response from the curl command. Hello, context. Now let's take a case where the user is not patient enough and after sending the curl request, he cancelled by pressing Ctrl C in the keyboard. Immediately after pressing these keys, the curl command will return. What do we think will happen to the request which is in process in the web server? Let's find out. If a curl request is sent and if it's cancelled before 10 seconds using the Ctrl C, the server will never know that the request is cancelled and we will still continue processing it. In this case too, the server will print writing response, although the user is cancelled, and will write a response. This is not good, of course, the request is cancelled, and the server is wasting valuable CPU time on a request which is already cancelled. As you have guessed by now, this is a typical use case for context. What we ought to be doing is watching on the context of the HTTP request and return immediately if the context is cancelled. The program is modified to do this and provided below. Function main, web server. Now the web server is checking. Is context dot done in the select case? If yes, then it is exiting. The main function is calling it. Mm -hmm. So we don't have in the client. So, 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 so the web server will already be the one calling context.timeout, right? In the previous examples, we have called the context.timeout, but now we, we make the web server. The web server will do this for us. All we need to do is to call a context.done and to check if it's done in our processing. In the above program, we watch on the context of the request and immediately return if it's cancelled. If the context is not cancelled, the server response will hello context after 10 seconds. Let's try the same scenario which we tried earlier. Let's run this new server and send the request using curl localhost 8080 and cancel it immediately using Ctrl C. The request will be cancelled and the done channel of the context will be closed. The server will print error processing request context cancelled and return immediately. Thus, the server doesn't continue to process requests which have been cancelled saving valuable CPU time. Context can also be used to, to pass request scope variables such as request ID. We'll discuss this in a separate tutorial of its own. I hope you, yeah, really like this tutorial. This was an amazing tutorial. This was written by Navin Ramantan. Navin Ramantan is a software engineer with interest in Go, Docker, Kubernetes, wow. Python and WebAssembly can contact him Okay, Navin at golangbot.com. This was an amazing blog post from golangbot.com. Uh,